Hello, Sarah Kimmel here with Family Tech Zone, and I would love to talk to you today about how we can help our kids continue to be social even in this world of social distancing. I know it's really tough for a lot of kids who are feeling really isolated right now, and even adults, um, we're feeling isolated, feeling apart from our friends, we can't go out and do the normal things that we are used to doing, but we live in 2020 and there is a lot of technology that can help us bridge this gap. So the first app I want to talk about is Marco Polo. Marco Polo is basically a video walkie talkie. And so you can send a video to your friend. They can send a video reply to you. I really love it because um, you can watch it whenever you want. You don't have to be live interacting right at that moment. And you can't add somebody to Marco Polo unless you have their phone number or you have their contact information. So you're not going to find anybody randomly adding your kids or yourself to Marco Polo. It's got a few fun filters and um, the kids really, really like it. So. Marco Polo is a really great way for them to kind of keep in contact with their friends in more of a call and response kind of um, situation. Um, obviously, walkie talkie, Marco Polo, that game, you know, Marco Polo, that's kind of where they got their name because it's the call and response. If you want more of a live interaction, um, another app that I recommend is House Party. Um, it w got really popular for a little bit and then it kind of went downhill again. Um, I just, people weren't using it very much. But in this new world of social distancing, I foresee a big uptick in people using House Party. And basically it's like an online chat forum. Um, again, you can add people, but this one has a search so you can search for random people. So people could try and add your children, but uh, you can make sure to tell them to only allow um, or only accept people that they know in person. Uh, and so with House Party, you can create like basically a chat room and you can lock the chat room so that no random people can join into it too. So it can be really private, but again, it's going to be a live interaction. So you're not going to have any monitoring or anything like that, but it would just be like if your friends all got on a phone call at the same time, um, except for you can see them and have a video chat. So uh, that's house party. Another really fun tool is Facebook Messenger Kids. I really like this app because again, the kids can't add anybody on their own. It has to all go through an adult's Facebook account and you can't really send and receive a, like it gets blocked. You can send pictures and um, you can't send any gifts, but they do have a lot of fun filters and stickers. So you can have that kind of Snapchat experience, but uh, your kid can use it and you can interact with your child um, when they're using Facebook Messenger kids. You don't have to install that app. You can just use the regular Facebook Messenger. Um, so that's a really great way for um, your kids to interact with their um, their friends and really family members is a really great one that they can interact with. Last, we've got Google Hangouts. Um, most kids have a Google account because they um, have one through their school and with that Google account, you can they can set up a hangout with their fellow classmates, with their teacher, and they can really get that interactive live classroom through Google Hangouts. My son just had one with his teacher and their whole class, and it was really helpful for him, and he was really excited to use that. Um, aside from those four apps that I recommend, there are some really fun things that you can your kids can do to help socially interact with their friends even though they're not going to be able to interact with them in person. So the first one is to have a Netflix party. So a Netflix party, if you go to Netflix, netflixparty.com. It's an app that you kind of install on your Chrome. It's a Chrome extension. And when you load up a Netflix video, you can select to watch with a friend. You invite them with a link. They do need their own Netflix account, but then you can chat live with your friends. It's like you're sitting down and watching the same movie or TV show together. And that's a really fun, interactive way to, you know, still watch a show that sounds like fun, but, um, but to get in that social interaction. Another thing that my daughter really likes to do is to create stories. So she will create a Google Doc and invite some of her friends. You know, they all have the same um, Google Classroom accounts 
And so they basically write this story together. So, you know, my daughter will write a chapter and then somebody else will write a chapter and somebody else. And they really interact in this story. You know, they could, you know, your friends could create a play where, you know, they're all creating their own parts and things like that. Um, but it's all, you can see all the changes in the Google Doc in real time. And that's a really fun thing that my daughter's been experimenting with um, to, you know, help her interact with her friends and be creative at the same time. Um, and then, obviously, there's video games. Video games actually most of the time now have an online component. And so they can add their friend's gamer ID or gamer tag and they could play with their friends on this video game. So like for the Nintendo Switch, my daughter plays Splatoon with her friend that she can't hang out with. Um, there's Minecraft on the PC. You can even create your own Minecraft server so that only neighborhood kids can join. You can only give them the login information to get to it. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do to help your kids be online in a video game and not still interact with any strangers or anything as long as they're interacting just with their friends they can have fun playing these video games even though they're with a friend you know and these days are really hard kids are going to be using up almost all of their screen time just on homework and on schoolwork you're going to need to relax some of your limits if you have them in place because the kids need this social interaction and to cut them off from that would be devastating to their mental health, I think. So um, make sure to allow them to have these online interactions with their friends. You know, make sure they're being safe. Remind them not to add any strangers to any of these platforms and that they're only interacting with their friends, with the people that they know in person. And they should be able to have a fun, interactive social experience even though they're stuck at home so i really hope these tips will help you out um, definitely follow at family tech on all social platforms for more of this information and i wish you guys so much luck um, being isolated at home is not fun I've reached my breaking point many times. I'm sure you guys have as well. Um, you know, if we band together, we can all get through this together. So uh, may the odds be ever in your favor. See you next time.